Next thing I knew, he was in the back of the van because the rear gate was unlocked. He was a scrubby, stout man with a chain for a belt and a long coat and black leather golf hat. I had not been in a situation like this all my life. Of course, he was the one with the fear. I could see the jagged outline of it feeding off his aura. So what did I to worry? My consternation was upon him, and he was so created to feel it like a hot iron I sent through him. I would have chosen the human liver, but presumably at this hour, in this sneaky and dangerous undertaking, he already set about to heat up his liver, liquid courage. I was shocked by only one aspect of the entire situation, that I felt violated myself when none of this business need concern me at all, seeing as I was witness to the trespass of property owned, and even that was a murky presupposition, by the man who kidnapped me not long ago. A word on my behalf. I am not a vile creature. I'm a young blood. I am neither feminist nor a hater. I am only a hater in one exact way. I hate those who sacrifice everything to be ruled by the fear. For though I cannot understand what it feels like to succumb to it, it not being in my nature to even harbor fear, I can feel it in others and know that all humankind, even creatures in certain moments of being utterly engulfed in flames or otherwise immolated or robbed of viable life, are vessels prone to fear, and like any vessel, may be secured against the inevitable storm. Whether they be covered, strapped, or lashed to appear, the owner of said vessel, and in this case, the human spirit and mind, is responsible to prefigure a means to defend themselves to the best of their ability from this mutable virus. Yes, I have little patience with and much insipid venom toward those who become soon inflated with fear in all sorts of circumstance and then react in fearful fashion, thus perpetuating an ignorant cycle and poisoning the environment by the littering of consequence. The sad and hapless thief who stumbled upon the lifted cylinder of a chrome car door lock at the back of a van tonight was only shocked out of his impulse to crush my skull with his hammer by the burning sensation he so suddenly felt in his spleen and much hotter than the fire water he tossed down his throat earlier. I digested his fear like we do instantaneously and found my mind focusing in on it, my eyes crossing outward and in and scanning but it was my intuition that sensed, my mind that saw, and the darkest shade of my shadow which shot out at him transparently, energetically, to penetrate his body armor and disarm him, complete. The hammer dropped from his hand. His elbow kept that perpendicular for a good three seconds before his arm fell to his side and his body back by the knees and he hit his head on the open gate as he fell out the back onto the pavement. I was then but witness to his succumbing to the violent, sudden pain, which ended as decisively as it started, and left him high on endorphins, getting up and yelling into a heavy, deep laugh, then a grunt. And he never looked back, but jumped like a man of his age does not jump, and fled on foot in the middle of the street, laughing like a madman for sure.